Hello, I'm Ron Fox for GetWoodworking.com and I shall be looking at routers and the features that you should be looking for to get the best out of them. So we can sum up so far looking at our router by saying we have a high speed motor which is variable speed controlled here. This particular one ranges from 9,000 to 27,000. Now for the 27,000 revs I would only use that on a little straight cutter, a quarter inch or a three eighth. Uh, and for perspex and alloy I'd be down at the other end at the 9,000. In between that you simply make an adjustment which you can do by the instructions in the manual or you soon get to the feel and the sound of your router and you'll do it automatically to compensate for your cutter uh, diameters. Variable speed then at the other end of the motor spindle we have the collet which in the case of both of these two routers is a top quality collet and then there is the question of plunge because these are plunge routers and they go up and down on their plunge legs and they lock in both cases here with a twist knob. You'll notice there's a bit of yellow insulating tape on the plunge knob on this T5. That is not there for the benefit of students on my courses. That is there for my benefit. After 25 years, I'm prepared to admit that I still try to twist the wrong knob to lock the plunge, particularly when the router is inverted in a table. So that's my little embellishment. Now the manufacturers of routers always quote the plunge in terms of how many millimetres the body goes up and down on its plunge legs. And in this case, you would find the handbook tells you that it plunges 50 millimetres. Well, that's interesting in its way because it tells you how long a cutter you can accommodate in that space without it sticking out when you release the plunge. But I am more interested in how deep does the collet plunge when you fully plunge the router? And in particular, does the collet come through the base of the router? The reason I'm interested in that is that for some jobs, like table routing, you hang the router in a table and you've got the thickness of the insert plate between the, your workpiece and your router. Now, if your collet can plunge a few millimetres through the base, then you can get back some of the depth of cut that you lose through the thickness of the insert plate. And equally, with some template jobs, when you're using a guide bush, your router is sitting on a template. And again, you've got the thickness of the template robbing you of depth of cut. So if your collet will plunge through the router base, you can often use cutters without resorting to the dreaded collet extension, which I avoid like the plague where I can. I've got one or two and I've only ever had to use one in anger once and that was with an exceptionally short shanked um, set of cutters for making little panels. But generally speaking, if you choose wisely and you've got a decent collet that plunges well, it's one of the things that you don't have to worry about. Now to put it on, we have a switch. Our switches have changed out of all recognition over the past few years mainly through the health and safety regulations which require switches um, to be of the safety variety. Now, the regulations are written in terms of new designs of router. So since this is a basically a design that's been around for 30 years because it was the old ELU 96, the switch is still the same. It's as simple as it gets if you want it on you put it on, it goes up for on. Want it off, you put it off. This is fine because it saves you the trouble of trying to strap or clip the switch on if you put the thing in a router table. And there are some jobs where it's convenient not to have your thumb or a finger holding a switch on all the time. At the other extreme, the cleverest switch that I know is on this DeWalt 621, which is a safety one. You have to depress the 
button on the top before you can put the switch on. It simply won't go if you don't depress it. But if you put it in a table, or if you want for any other reason to hold the switch on, it latches. This causes some people a certain amount of problem to while they learn how to put the switch on. Fortunately, it's like the proverbial riding the bike. Once you've got it, you've got it. So there is my favorite safety type switch. So we have a switch to put the router on and off. We have a plunge and a means of locking it to go up and down. We have a collet that will hold our cutter in. We have a reasonable aperture in the base so that we can see what we are doing. And we also have a, a method of, of setting the depth of cut. Now, this is a very common system where you have a rotating turret with three positions. And the idea is that if you're making a reasonably heavy cut, too heavy to take in one pass of the router, you can do it in steps by setting the turret and checking it with or your stop bar. And what you do then is you start with the cutter set with the stop bar on the longest stop rod. That gives you the shallowest cut. Make that cut, move round to the next one, go a bit deeper without altering the stop bar, of course. Then to the lowest one, which you have set very carefully on your final depth of cut. The intermediate cuts don't really matter in terms of the nearest millimeter. It's the final cut that's the crucial one. The object of the other steps is simply to take light cuts to get down in, in this case, three passes. Having said that, you look at that and you think, well, that one is very much out of step with the other two. It's only really a, a two position turret. And you're right when you say that because this one is for a different purpose. One of the things you can, one of the accessories that you get with this router is a fine height adjuster. Now I regard this as a very useful accessory, particularly for jobs like dovetailing, and I'll show you why in a moment. But the idea is that on that longest thread, which is a plain bit of threaded rod, not with a screw head on it, you remove your ordinary stop bar from here, put the fine adjuster on, and now you've got a means of setting your depth of cut very precisely indeed, simply by screwing down or screwing up again. Now, this is not only very useful in its own right as a depth setter, because you may want to make your cut very precisely. Again, turn back to dovetailing, a lot of dovetail jigs, the uh, fit of the joint is determined solely by the depth of cut. You can't vary this with the thickness of the wood. And if you go a whisker too deep, your joint will be too tight to go together. If you go a whisker too shallow, it will be a rather sloppy joint. So this enables you to get it spot on with the aid of a test cut. But it also has another very valuable function. When this is on your router, it can act as a safety device. You've got the router, you've plunged the depth with the fine adjuster, you do up your plunge knob and away you go and you do your routing. Maybe you're dovetailing with your guide bush and cutter. What you don't want to do with some cuts is to inadvertently release the plunge because this is the way you normally work. You get into the routine, switch on, plunge, lock, make the cut, release plunge, switch off. You try that with some of the dovetail jigs and you will try to get a dovetail cutter come up through a very narrow guide bush. And you won't do that very many times. With this fine adjuster on, it's not only the precise depth setter, but it's also a safety factor. If you do inadvertently release the 
plunge lock when you've got a large cutter or a cutter bigger than the guide bush you're using it can't come up anyway so it's one of the things that I regard as a very useful device on a router and in fact for dovetailing I wouldn't want to dovetail unless I did have a router with this fine adjuster on. Now there's a certain amount of confusion among router users as to what the fine adjuster is and the confusion is that you can have some routers with very precise depth setting with uh, there's even one with a dial gauge to set your depth of cut with the ordinary stop bar so you can set your depth very precisely but it does not hold the router at that depth if you lose the if you loosen the plunge knob I refer to the fine height adjuster as something that not only enables you to set the depth of cut very accurately but prevents the router coming up should you inadvertently release the plunge and I find that an extremely useful accessory now it is an accessory with this router got the same thing with this one which we will look at in a moment some routers have got this built in some of the half inch ones like the big Freud and Makita's have this built in but it's a very useful device whether it comes as standard with the router or whether it's an accessory so it's one of my points to look for in the perfect router so we can set our depth very accurately we've got a safety device to stop it coming up and the other thing about this is that sometimes it's your only <laughs> easy way it's not all that easy though but it's your only way of setting the depth of cut when your router is inverted in a table when you're doing table routing there are two main problems one is setting the depth of cut accurately and the other is getting your cutters in and out if you've got this on at least it gives you a way a rather laborious way of winding the router up and down to get at the collet latest model routers are addressing these problems as we shall see a bit later but it's another point for this all-round router so we've got motor collet depth setting fine height adjuster simple switch decent aperture in the base and the other thing we've got in this particular base which is exactly the same as the old elu 96 there are two six millimeter tapped holes in the base there now these are very useful partly because you can use them to hold the router in a router table but secondly there are many accessories made that bolt to your router and because these are the same standard position and diameter as the original elu i always refer to these in the magazines as EDT, Elu DeWalt Trend Standard. It means if you've got that in the base of your router, there are lots of router tables and other devices that you either attach your router to or that you attach to your router. It plugs you in to about the biggest range of router accessories that's ever been made. Not all routers have that, many do fortunately but it's something that while you're running down your checklist and looking at a potential purchase it's one of the things to check because it makes life so much easier if you've got that mm -hmm.